Hello again. My name is Roland. I'm with Delmi Solutions and Delmi Training Institute. Have you ever wondered how easy it is to make your own fancy patch cables? These cables look like they're factory made. I just made these. They pretty much take about a minute or so to get it done. And it's pretty straightforward. You can get them with the boot sleeves on it and that acts as a strain relief. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how to terminate your own RJ45 using the pass-through connectors. Well, so to get started, we're going to need um, a piece of cable. This is a category 6 cable and it's an unshielded twisted pair, so it's a UUTP. So this is going to be our test cables. We're going to put RJ45 Cat6 crimps. Gonna need your crimp tool. I'll put a link in the description below. Gonna need my cable stripper. That's another cable stripper that I also got. And I always prefer to use a cable stripper than using the one that comes with your crimp tool. I'm gonna show you how to use them. They both work pretty much the same. If you do not have any of these and you have you have a pair of lineman scissors, you can also use that. And having said that, if you don't have any of these three then you can use your X-Acto knife as well. When using your X-Acto knife and your lineman scissors, extreme care has to be taken in order not to cut through the sheathing of the cable and the copper conductor. The next thing you're going to be needing is a pair of um, cable testers. It tests for pinout. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cable stripper that I have Without any adjustments, I'll try and strip off the jacket. There's a blade on this side of the tool that is going to cut through my jacket. And I spin it around. It is scored through the jacket, allowing me to pull this off. So I have to inspect where the cut is because you notice that with this, there have been some cuts made to the sheathing which means that it has affected the copper conductor. It's not a good start. So with uh, my Phillips screwdriver, I'm going to screw this. It lifts the top of the, the tool, uh, thereby decreasing the cutting depth from the blade to the uppermost part of my cutting tool. So I'm going to give it a second try and put my cable through and I'm going to spin it and then take it off. It's caught a little bit onto the cable. When you bend it, that's when it breaks off. The next tool that I want to talk about is this one from Fluke. Right, this one also has an adjustment ring here. It applies pressure onto the cutting blade. So once I increase this, the screw comes down and depresses the blade, thereby increasing the pressure that is going to be on the cable to be cut. So by applying the same method, I lift this side up and I put my cable through. I spin it a couple of times. It's caught onto the jacket. The cutting depth went too deep, exposing the copper within. By decreasing the pressure of the tool and I'm going to try and strip it again. So you notice that it just scored onto the jacket the cable without cutting through. So again I just break it off, take off the jacket and I inspect this. There is no damage uh, to the sheathing and then exposing the copper core. So that is how you adjust any of these um, two stripping tools. So it is very important that you know how to strip the jacket off the cable even before you begin termination. If you do not follow this procedure properly, you're always going to have issues when you test your connector. So if you're going to be terminating using a boot sleeve, the first thing you want to do is slide the boot over the cable and then strip about an inch of the cable. And 
thereby exposing it. Like I mentioned in some of my videos, when you hold this RJ45 connector with the release on the top, then your pin one is to the right of that. Now, if you flip it over with all the golden pins facing upwards, then your pin one is to your left. So now I'm gonna go ahead and untwist the green pair because that's where I'm gonna start. It's always a good practice to untwist everything. And once you untwist that, you notice that each individual strand still has some amount of twist in it. It's very important that you straighten it out as best as you can. Another thing you can also do to take out the kinks is if you have this um, lineman scissors, it's got a little bit of grooves here. So what you can do is you can put that cable in, put your thumb on and just slide it out like that. So since we're doing the 568A terminations, the color coding is going to be white green green, white orange blue, white blue orange and white brown brown. So now I know with the 568A termination, my white green, it's my pin number one. So starting from, I always terminate holding the connector up like this. So I always like to have my pin one to my left. If you are right-handed or you prefer to have your pin one to your right, that's you want to feed it through the connector like this, then you free to start with your white green starting from your right. So you could have it like this, but because I'm used to always terminating with my connector upwards like this, so that once I'm feeding the cables through, I'm able to see that they all go through the individual channels on the jack. I always like to arrange it with my pin one to the left. My pin one, which is the white green, and my pin two, which is the solid green. So I'm gonna take that and put them together. Now, my pin number three is going to be my white orange. All right, so I'm going to take my white orange. I'm going to take that white orange and I'm going to put it next to this. And whilst I put the cables together, I always want to straighten them to make sure that they are in one perfect straight line. And my pin four is my solid blue. So I take my solid blue and I put it next to it like that. And my pin five becomes my white blue. So I take my white blue and I put it next to it like that. Now my pin six becomes my solid orange and I put that next to it like that. Right? And my pin eight, so my pin seven, my pin seven becomes my white brown and my pin eight becomes my solid brown. So what I do is I take these cables all the strands and I try and put them together to make them as straight as possible. That is where the success comes in when you're trying to do it. The cable prep, either you're doing a pass-through or a non-pass-through, is the same. The only difference when you're doing a non-pass-through is you have to make sure that after you've dressed it, you're gonna take that, your jack, and put it next to it and find out how long you have to cut off the excess cables from uh, the pairs that you've straightened out before feeding it through. But with the pass-throughs, I don't have to worry about any of that. So I'm either gonna take my scissors, if I have one, and I'm gonna trim off the excess. This makes it easier for me when I'm sliding it through the connector. And if you do not have the scissors with you, then that is when you can use your crimp tool because you notice that that cuts flat. So now that I have trimmed the edge nicely like this, I'm going to feed that into the connector. And the reason why I like to hold it up like this is I'm able to see through the connector and see to make sure that all the cables are oriented properly as I slide them through. So you want to always make sure that the jacket of the cable goes through the crimp that is going to hold onto the jacket to prevent the cable from sliding out. 
Now with this here, you can always double check to make sure whether you made a mistake on your cable alignment or not. If you did, all you have to do is pull this out, fix your mistakes and push it back in. Right, it's easier to see through this when you have it like this. With a non-pass through one, sometimes it's difficult to see because sometimes you have the cables crossing when you're feeding them in. That is why it's very important to always make sure that your cables are well aligned like this before you even attempt to slide them through. The next stage is I slightly slide that through like that. I gently crimp on the excess cuts off like that whilst it does that it pushes the copper pins here to make contact into the through the jacket or the sheeting of the cable and makes contact with the copper now if your cables are not cut properly the excess that sticks out if they are not cut properly or if the blade on your crimp tool is dull that it does not cut it properly then what you're going to notice is that it wouldn't cut through the copper properly so some of the copper cables through each individual strand are going to end up touching what happens is there's a shot but if your blades are very sharp and clean you always get a nice and a clean cut always inspect it to make sure that nothing is sticking out and once you've done that with this um, boot sleeve you can just slide that on like that right and you have successfully terminated your own cable with the boot sleeve on it now I'm going to use I'm going to terminate another one using one of these um, these fancy connectors the strain relief that's going to be on the cable to help reduce the bend on it when you try to bend the cable the first thing you want to do is to put slide your boot sleeve on it like that and you're going to go through the same process So having done this successfully, before you crimp with this style of connector that I'm using with the boot sleeve. So before you crimp, it's very important to take your boot sleeve, slide it on like that, and you hear a snap, right? Right, making sure that all the excess cables comes all the way through and then when you push that and you have this side sticking out like this usually your boot falls off even before you start to crimp so always make sure that when you're feeding it in this portion also goes into the connector like that all right so both ends go in you inspect it to make sure that everything cuts flush So this gives you a nice and clean termination like ones that you find made out of the factory. All right, so now that I've finished um, terminating, I just want to run them quickly through the tester to make sure that my cables have been terminated right. So with my basic tester that I have here, I am going to end up uh, plugging uh, connecting one side here and connecting the other side onto this one and now I'm going to turn that on so as you can see the cables are running through and pin 1 matches pin 1 pin 2 matches pin 2 so you can see the fancy LED lights are corresponding to each and every one telling me that 
the cables have been successfully terminated. Well, if I have to use my fluke qualification tester and plug one end of the cable into it like that and plug the other end into like I'm going to turn the unit on. Test and we'll see what happens. Alright, so this brings us to yet the end of another tutorial on how to create your own custom made patch cables using the RJ45 pass through connectors. Well, um, if you found this video informative, please make sure to subscribe, like and share our videos. And if you want to be the first to be notified of any of our future videos, please make sure you turn on your notification. If there are any future topics that you'd want us to touch on, we'd love to hear from you. If you have any comments also, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you. My name is Roland, I'm with Delmi Solutions and Delmi Training Institute. Thank you for taking time to watch this video and stay safe.